Hey folks, this is Bailey from Dankless Wargaming. Hey, this is Heath from Tim War Hawaii. And welcome to the Path to Redemption, the Warhammer 40,000 Dark Angels podcast, where our aim is to provide Dark Angels players with the tactical and hobby skills that they need in order to enjoy this wonderful hobby of ours. In this month's episode, we're going to go straight to the Meta Watch to talk about two top 10 finishes in March and April for Dark Angels players. In our featured segment, Heath and I are going to discuss our Adepticon experiences. In uh, the Hobby Challenge, Heath and I reveal some of our hobby finds from said Adepticon. And last but not least, we check in check in on our ho- hobby, or our community comments from last month, which certain somebody appears quite frequently, as he always mm-hmm. does, because he's as the best. As he always does. So, yep. We greatly appreciate it. So, looking at the Meta Watch, we have Planet Arcanite. Uh, 2024, it's a 51-player, five-round grand tournament front in Kansas City, Missouri, Missouri, Indiana. Uh, for those of you that are from around the world, there are Kansas is a state. Missouri is also a state They're right next to each other. And there's a Kansas City on both sides of the border. And I think there's a river involved, too. Isn't it the Miss? No, just uh, the border. Missouri remember. River? Yeah. The Mississippi's They're- on the other side of... Of that's right yeah it's between illinois and missouri yeah yeah so yeah so there's a kansas city missouri and a kansas city kansas so you always have to ask which one they're from yep hey yep. united states geography man i don't know <laughs> so <laughs> just cool. like there's an Ar- arkansas that looks like our kansas but we don't say our kansas <laughs> no yeah not a thing <laughs> so <laughs> brett abaugh uh had an eighth plate finish uh he was running the classic gladius task force uh, and the notes from Goonhammer say that this guy had the all-rounder Marines list with Azrael for the bonus CP. We had Redemptors, Gladiators, and then Aggressors inside a Land Raider Redeemer. So, Space Marine good stuff mm-hmm. with the Space extra Marine CP. So, we're seeing what Lance, uh, you're trying to put, um, you're going to go to Assault Doctrine put Lance on your uh, Aggressors inside your Land Raider. Have, you know, they pop out they advance, they charge, they gain lance, they punch something to death. I feel yeah, like that's aggr- what's going to happen so, there. Something that I did not notice about aggressors since the codex came out is that they uh, the aggressors' power fists the, in the index. I think they they used to hit on fours. Now they hit on threes. Ooh, that's big. And I did not was not aware of that. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so power fists actually do a lot of work now, I, or a lot more work. It's like the hitting on threes, to hitting on fours, is a real subtle, real subtle lift, but it's it's important. So, yeah, and then I'm assuming these gladiators are probably lancers, and then we got probably plasma redemptors, and yep, all chunky, all good. A little bit of shoot, a mm-hmm. little bit of punch. I like all that. So, congrats on getting that eight plate finish out of fifty one. That's pretty good. Uh, going on to the Peterborough Slam GT, the sixth incarnation. Uh, you have 36 players, five round in Peterborough, England. This took place over the weekend of April 6th. Uh, seventh place finish is Toby Bennett. He's running Dark Angels and a Firestorm Assault Force. The Goonhammer notes mm-hmm. are it's a twist on the Iron Storm whole style lists. You have the Firestorm with uh, for speedier pressure from all these holes. Right, because you have the when you get they all have advanced and shoot, and then you get the plus one strength within twelve inches. So, so yeah, I um I played a firestorm for the first time on Wednesday night, and man, I like I like it. Um, I like it a lot. So, um, pardon me, I just posted the list into our show notes. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. and it's all in white font. So I will fix that real quick. Assuming I know how to do it. There we go. Problem solved. All right. So um, <clears throat> apologize. We can't bring in the list from the, the Kansas City game because it's in one of the alternate apps. But P- Peterborough being the, uh, you know, the host location of our very own Alan Percival uh, is a more civilized. And so they put everything <laughs> in the BCP. Uh, so uh, this list is Firestorm, as we said. So uh, it has two characters, which is Azrael and a Phobos Librarian. Uh, one five-man unit of intercessors, and then we have a five-man unit of assault inter- assault intercessors, a five-man eradicator squad, and then up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, more white text, more white text. Oh, this more is white different. Text. 
Yeah, this is so the five eradicators uh, with a multi melta. Wait, no, hold on. Three eradicators. It's ninety five points. <clears throat> Three eradicators uh, with a multi melta. Then you have a gladiator reaper. So two gladiator reapers. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, two Inceptor drop units. Correction, three Inceptor drop units. Two with plasma, one with assault bolters. The infiltrators okay. to pair with the Phobos librarian. Double redemptor with macroplas. Two scout units. And a storm Third speeder thunder strike. Third scout unit. Oh, did I miss another one? Oh, yeah. Yep. It's in the white Three text. scout units. Yeah, yeah that the, the white text gets you every time. Um, oh, I highlighted it. I didn't change the color. Boom, there we go. Yeah, so we three go. scout and units. Thunder strike. Gotcha. And uh, scouts have a missile launcher and a sniper rifle. Combat weapon, you know, two with missile launcher, sniper rifle, one with just, you know, stuff, and then the thunder strike. So, okay. With Firestorm, those Inceptors are, are actually really scary. Uh, yes. Yes. Because Inceptors are base strength eight and they overcharge to nine, or are they base seven overcharge to yes. eight? I don't recall. Yes, they go to strength so, nine and three damage. So, which means they're strength 10. Yes. So, when they're within 12 inches. Uh, and this isn't half range. It is just if you are shooting a range weapon within 12 inches, it gets plus That's one strength. That's the closest strength. enemy and target. I think it has to be the closest enemy yeah. target, too. The closest enemy target. Does it have to be the closest enemy target? I Ooh. think it all it might have to be that. I'll double check. with You keep you keep talking. Yeah, yeah. Look it up. okay, okay. Let's, let's, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. So... So, so, um, but okay, the whole thing of the Zepters, obviously, is you drop them within three inches. And so that gives you, uh, I mean, strength 10, three damage, uh, you're going to be killing Terminators with, oh. with a plum. Yep. Are you, the, are you uh, correct? The, the closest mm -hmm. enemy target thing applies to the plus one strength bonus or the okay. plus one to wound thing. But no, it just has to be within 12 inches to get the plus yeah. one. Yeah, so the plus one to wound, they're plus one. I knew that they're, they're, that strategy, the stratagem that did the plus one to wound, that had to be closest target, but okay. So, uh, all right. So this list is, so intercessors to, to you know, sticky and objective, as real and librarian. So one of the things I like about this list is um, he has resisted the urge to dump a whole bunch of points into characters. Uh, and that's good yes. because one of the things that I have found myself doing recently is, you know, I spend 500 points, 400 something points on characters, right? Because, okay, well, I'm going to have Azrael and then I'm going to have a, you know, a Terminator captain or an aggressor cap or like a Gravis captain or something. And the next thing you know, I spent 500 points on characters, right? And I'm oh. always, you know, finding that I don't have enough units to, you know, play against you know necrons or tier or, or uh not tyranids uh tau stuff like that that just they have more stuff to interact with the game uh and so i admire the discipline here in sticking to just what you absolutely need so uh yeah so the intercept the assault intercessors those are they're not gonna have a character with them but they're just gonna jump around and do actions all right and they drop and do actions. Yeah, well, the eradicators oh go ahead but I was gonna say, I mean, just why why I'm currently I've got I just showed Heath in the pregame, but like I got mine that I got at Tampa Open. I'm finally getting some paint on them because I just feel like I need them. Because think about like they have all the right keywords. They're infantry, so they interact with terrain the way infantry do. Mm -hmm. But they also have mm -hmm. fly, so they can fly over things if they have to. Uh, and they're fast, so like if they could start somewhere, they can get into a corner to do like investigate signals or pop into the middle of the board and they're relatively cheap at 85 points. So if you have to jump them into the middle of the board suddenly to, um, what's that thing called? Uh, deploy, deploy teleport, teleport homers. homers in the center of the board. You can just go, okay, I can sacrifice an 85 point. You don't have to like take <clears throat> an infantry unit, put it in a transport, run the transport out there, dump them out of the transport and do it. Cause now you have two big, th you have your squad and your tank out in the open. Like these guys are just cheap and they pop out there. I think that like, like, so the center of the board, cause there's always an objective in the center of the board and the center of the board yep. is kind of where the whole focus of the game pivots around. So I, the, I don't generally find that there is an opportunity to drop something with a night with nine inch clearance in the center of the board. <clears throat> but, um, I also don't place top 10 GTs, so maybe right. I'm wrong, but um, so, so yeah, so I mean, there's, they're an 85 point action monkey unit with deep strike, yep. right? And it's, and they're fast, right? So that's, that's good. So, uh, okay. So eradicators, uh, look, 
look, y'all, Eradicators and Firestorm are are really good because that plus oh, yeah. one strength gets them to strength 10. And then when you use that plus one to wound strat and they yeah. have a uh, reroll hits, wounds, and damage against monsters and vehicles. That's amazing. It's so good. Um, I jumped five of them out of an, uh, out of a repulsor, you know, when it got shot, uh, by a, oh, yeah, towel, yeah. uh, you know, what is, whatever their, their, the, the missile, pl- the missile, uh, uh sky ray gunship, is. the sky ray. I was thinking manta ray. No sky ray. Yeah. So he shot my repulsor, didn't kill it. They jumped out and just aced it. Just gone. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. Um, so yeah. <laughs> And there's also a cool trick you can do with them. You put an apothecary biologus with them, and they uh, they, they have a, this detachment has the enhancement to once a turn turn any hit roll or saving throw into a six. So you'll just roll the dice, re-roll the dice, change one to a six if you don't need it, and then with the biologus, it's a lethal hit automatically just goes right through. So it also makes uh, Overwatch from Eradicators really spicy because you're oh, guaranteed yeah. to get one. So anyway. Uh, enough about that. So back to this list. So let's again, Azrael, Librarian, Intercessors, Assault Intercessors, Eradicators. So then here's new tech that we haven't really seen. Uh, we haven't really talked about. Double Gladiator Reaper. What do Gladiator Reapers do? Well, they have two big burp guns on the top. That's what I know that yeah. they do. Yeah, big gun go and burr, the cheap- right? And I think they're also the cheapest of that chassis. They're so one fifty, getting... right? Where the Valiant yeah. and the the Valiant's also one fifty, but the Lancer is one sixty. So, uh, Got the gl- yeah, I'm looking it up right now. Gladiator Reaper. Yeah. So, I gotta... oh. yeah. So they can take they can actually take a lot of freaking guns, right? They can. So, you can have a. Tempest, you can have two Tempest Bolters, which are 24, they're basically rapid fire four bolt rifles. <clears throat> so yep. four attack, rapid fire four, hit on threes, four, AP one, damage one. You have two of those. So within 12 inches, that is 16 shots. And then you got your twin heavy onslaught cannon, which is 12 shots, dev wounds, twin linked. And remember, this is all plus one strength when you're going when you're within twelve inches, and then you have an iron hell stubber, which is three or six more shots, and then you have an Icarus pod. So that's nice. And their ability, if I recall, is the onslaught cannon has sustained hits two when targeting infantry units. Yup. Gross. Yeah. So um, two of these are just kind of deal do double duty uh, in that you've got a huge amount of, sh- of damage one, AP one to AP nothing, just DACA. Uh, and the fact that it's 12 shots with sustained hits two and uh, twin linked and devastating wounds means that's 24 shots re-rolling that you can fish for dev wounds on. <clears throat> so you just want to plink stuff off of Catan and Redemptors and all this. Redemptors maybe not because they're they're two up saves, but the stuff that's a little more lightly armored that relies on damage reduction and stuff like that. These are actually pretty good at, at chunking those. Um, and when you throw uh, like into infantry, a hail strike pairs really well with these because it makes everything an additional point of AP. Yep. So um, two of these is just. They're surprisingly flexible because, yeah, they're going to murder large groups of infantry, but they're also going to do a pretty good number against anything that doesn't have a two-up save. And even stuff that does have a two-up save, you're going to get a few wounds off of it just due to the dev wounds. So, so yeah. Uh, And then this removes all the effectiveness of damage reduction and all that fancy stuff that a lot of people rely on these days. Right? So, kind of like this. Right? Uh, All right. So, we got our... Three Inceptors, which is nice. Uh, a unit of Infiltrators, so that pairs with the Librarian to screen yep. out and hold the backfield. Double Redemptor. Scouts, 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 Thunderstrike. So one thing we have not seen in this list, which has been a very common 
feature of Dark Angel stuff is a Dark Shroud. In fact, the only thing that makes yeah. this Dark Angels is Azrael, uh, which is, you know, that's kind of the way they we're playing the game these days. Because uh, Azrael is a, you know, he slaps in close combat. Uh, but there's nothing yes. really for him to pair with other than the other than the intercessor, like the regular intercessors. So I guess you do that so he doesn't get just indirect fired. Um, yeah. But, so, so yeah. Interesting list. It's got a lot of tools to play the game with. You've got six scouts. Or sorry, uh, like you get six, basically, actually seven between the three scouts, the three inceptors, and the assault intercessors, or the the jump assault intercessors. Hold on, am I? Am I yeah, assault intercessors with jump packs. You have seven things that are basically action monkeys that also hit pretty hard, or and well, I guess four of them hit pretty hard because the inceptors and the assault intercessors. So, yep. Um, this is, uh, this is good. There's a lot of tools here. Yep. And like, and I think you were, it, just, it brought up a dark memory of, of the, where you talk about those reapers of like what people have complained sometimes in like other games, like, uh, I think bolt action had an issue a while back where like the most efficient tank killer tanks in the game were not actually a, like the 88 millimeter, like anti-tank guns. It were, mm-hmm. it was the vehicles that had uh mounted 50 cal machine guns and they would just dock a plank things to death and that so it's funny that like that strategy has appeared now and for yeah i mean it's always it's just, been in 40k but like it appears in this list it's like yep that is actually a valid strategy that applies across multiple game systems of if i just throw I'll, enough uh, dice at it it dies i'll throw you i'll see you one more uh and uh that's a common battle tech strategy is just take a mech and you just load it down with machine guns Okay. Because yeah, I'm not going to punch your armor, but once but once something does get through your armor, I have a huge number of opportunities to hit your internals and roll crits. So uh, it's just it's a way that you are abusing the dice, like the the dice mechanics of the game. Um, right. Old style 40k where they had armor values, this would just be whatever. Who cares, right? They just literally bounce yeah. off your armor. But uh, so yeah, I mean, there you go. And, uh, and this is also a return to uh, 8th edition in a way, too, where like now scouts aren't an elite choice anymore because we don't have those anymore. So now like the baseline, like three scout squads, like I've noticed that the last couple of months since we got the new kit of scouts and the new 10th uh, edition uh, formatting of, oh, there's just three scout squads. Because I remember when everybody brought a battalion of scouts, I had a battalion of scouts with bolt guns that are laying around yeah, here that somewhere. Was like your, and, like, everybody that was like how it. you... That was how you satisfied your compulsory troop requirement in 8th edition was 15 scouts, right? Uh, because tactical marines were too expensive. Intercessors were too expensive. Like a unit of three scouts, a unit of five scouts was 50 points, 55 points. And it was just, yep. okay, this is my tax to get to the good stuff. And they would screen out or bubble wrap or whatever we call it back then. But yeah, so. Yep. 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 Um, but here, I mean, here, because they can, they can do movement shenanigans uh they yep. give you the tools you need to play secondary objectives right so you just you should every turn at the end of your opponent's turn pick them up so that on your next turn when you draw whatever you draw if it's investigator deploy or behind enemy lines just yeah boop here we go um i also like having a callous assassin to do that but yeah so but we don't uh, need the inquisition okay. in these parts they get too nosy Look. too nosy the inquisition Look, I just said I said you bring the Caldus to the battle. I didn't say she had to survive the battle. <laughs> I watched that so. episode of uh, of Warhammer Plus. It's pretty hard to kill them, even when you have a Caldus locked up on your ship. They still get out. Mm. Fair All enough. right, you ready to move to uh, to yeah, let's, your, let's completing the puzzle? You com- you completed the Infinity Gauntlet, Heath of major Warhammer events. By finally making it to Adepticon, so please lead off. The, you're you're the right. you're the rookie. I want to hear hear the excitement and the joy from a first timer. Okay. So yeah, so uh, I went to Adepticon for the first time. Uh, that was I, I really enjoyed it. Like I've been to LVO, I've been to Nova. Uh, I'd never been to Adepticon, um, uh, and it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to make every effort possible to get there to get to get there next year and to try and make it a recurring thing. Uh, of course, barring my barring my work schedule, because I am a one of one in several of my duties at work and just kind of have to see yep. how that shakes out. But um, so, yeah, my, my friend Joe and I uh, were both went both went. Uh, so we 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 flew out Tuesday night, 
from here at like 8 p.m., you know, connected through Denver, got there right around lunch in Chicago. Uh, I had not been back to Chicago other than to connect to the airport since I went to boot camp in 1999. So I had some oh, certain wow. feelings. I was feeling some feelings <laughs> going to Chicago. Um, I didn't remember hardly any of it, but that's fine. So, yeah, our, our friend Amory, uh, who uh, you have also met at Depticon last year, yep. uh, we also went, but he chose an earlier flight. He flew out here from Hawaii at 5, got there at 6 a.m. on the direct. Um, and that was – so he got there early. So, uh, once again, full disclosure, table war. Boop. Uh, the boys kind of kind of uh i won't say sponsored us but uh we agreed to work their booth at at the in the vendor hall and in return they paid for our hotel room and our event badges uh we had we paid for our own flights uh so <clears throat> so yeah so we went out there we got there wednesday you know amory was there he helped him set up the booth joe and i got there at afternoon and we helped them finish a lot of stuff and set up a bunch of stuff in the vendor hall Uh, And so then we went to the uh, we went to the GW preview. So we saw the the AOS four you know teaser. Nice. Uh, And now, so I've never been to GW preview before. So that's cool. That's that's a a check off the list. Um. So y'all, Chicago's cold at that time of year. Like like, end of March is cold. Like we we weren't able to get rooms in the Renaissance Schaumburg itself. Uh, So we we're in a not the whatever whatever it was whatever little hotel like a, a half block away uh gotcha and uh and that was fine it was you know a 10 15 minute walk uh but todd one of the owners of table were had a room at the schomburg so we were able to keep like our models and stuff there uh throughout the nice. con so it was a lot easier rather than moving back and forth every time we wanted to get something so uh so yeah so like we uh opened on thursday um Joe went and he played in the he played in the champs, uh, and with his Necrons, his can upset court list, he went two and two. Uh, the his first game, he lost his first two games. Uh, his first game was into an Eldar player that got into the top sixteen, so he didn't feel super bad about that. Uh, and his second game was into a, uh, someone who you know was what you know was slower uh, and right. and didn't you know because because of some some you know learning disabilities and didn't make it through more than about two and a half or three turns. And it's once again, Hey, I'm not going to be well, upset about that. And I would like to point but, out at this point that that, that matters more at Adepticon because you only have two hour and 45 minute rounds. Cause you play four rounds in one day. You play so four rounds time in one is day. Of the and, oh my God. Of Adepticon. I, don't, I don't know if I ever want to do that. Uh, it's, it's it rough. was a rough, it's rough. <clears throat> yeah. So, <laughs> but, um, and, and, and Joe hadn't like, just like me, you know, he travels a lot for work and he hadn't been able to play. He actually, that was like his first right. game of 40 K in like two and a half or three months, I think. Ooh, and so that is he rough. was a little, he was a little rusty, but he, but the rust kind of started shaking off. Uh, and he, he yeah. got within spitting distance of winning that both those games. Okay. Nice. Uh, especially nice. that first one. So, um, so yeah, so that was how day one went. Uh, we had a great time. Like, uh, like I actually had a really good time working with Tabor. So my first first day there, I'm just sitting there at Tabor slinging cases and mats yeah. and stuff. And Bailey, I see Bailey walk up. He's doing the crab hands. Oh, so you know, <laughs> we got to we got to hug it out. Um, and met your buddy Chris. And yep. And yeah. Uh, so and then later I got that to night, meet Joe. All, it was pretty cool. But got finally Joe, got to put yeah. names and vo- to faces and stuff. It was cool. Indeed, indeed. So we. Uh, later that night, we went up to the uh, the bar, the hotel bar, uh, and you know, got to have a couple drinks and sit down and do some stuff. Uh, and I think I got back there from something right about the same time you were leaving because I had to go yeah. take Joe food because he was still playing his fourth tournament. And when I came yep. back, you had dropped off some stuff and then had to roll out. But yeah, so so yeah, um, yeah, I was so in was Airbnb cool. about thirty minutes away, so it was time to go. Oh wow, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, like the, the second day uh, was so Friday. Um, I think we had I had planned on a couple of uh, like like painting sessions or something. So, I we, I went to do three little painting events. So uh, one with Aaron Lovejoy, who I've I've taken his classes before. It was a non-metallic metals class, and that was pretty cool. Uh, I think I have one of the things over here somewhere. But yeah. 
So, okay. uh, and then, so we both did that. And then we both went to another one with, uh, so army painter had a nice booth there and they oh, yeah. had, um, Caleb Wissenbach, uh, who is a, uh, it, who runs, uh, with, a cat, uh, I can't recall her last name, but they run a CK studios, right? A airbrushing airbrush education company of some renown. Uh, I've taken class with them before at LVO back in 2020 before the plague years. Uh, really good stuff. Anyway, they're working with Army Painter, and they were there talking about the new Army Painter paints and the Fanatic paints and the Speed paints and all that stuff. And they were doing a free, like, lesson. I was like, I'm gonna, I get to go to an hour long lesson with Caleb Wissenbach for free, y'all. Let's, Wait, is, let's this, do this. is that guy bald and a beard? Yes, he's got he's 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 bald. He's got a gray beard. Super cool, dude. Um, oh, I know that guy talented. of bourbon. I know yeah, that guy a bottle uh, of bourbon because really, he was at the so, Gen Con team with me last yeah. year. Yeah, he's he's cool. Okay, I really yeah. like him. So we're I like I was trying to talk him up back in 2020 to come into Hawaii to do airbrush classes, and then COVID just <laughs> rendered all that moot. So we we reengaged on that, uh, and maybe we'll try and see if we can work something out. But now that we've got a like the Hawaii 40k and hobby community is a little stronger, um, I think there might be a way to pull it off. But uh, also. Um, his name uh, Philip Hall uh, yep. was also there working with Army Painter, uh, also known as the Glacial Geek. He's a, a you know a, another he's a YouTube Dark Angel player of you know he's had a channel going for a long time. We spoke spoke with him. I actually ran into him at LVO back in 2019, 18? I don't remember, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna t- we talk to him. Uh, we'll probably try and have him on at some point in, in the f- in the near future. Um, I don't know, like. Cons are really cool because you just meet a lot of people and, and yep. know, set up a lot of interactions. Uh, we ran into we ran into our boy Adam. Uh, I ran yeah. into him multiple times uh, throughout the. I saw him at the at the hotel bar that first night. Uh, I saw him. You know, got into an elevator with him a couple times. Uh, I stopped by the streaming booth. You know, said hi again. Like I ran into him. There's a there's a staff after party on Sunday night. If you if you were not aware, yep. uh, and it is there's a. There's a lot of there's a lot of nice people there, so I went with the table where guys, um, and that was a good time. Uh, they're all playing um, like cockroach, get, little cockroach card game, or whatever, uh, up in yeah. one of the suites on the 16th floor. It was it was it was really cool. So, uh, so yeah, it was it was a good time, man. Yeah, um, so I got to do a couple of painting classes. Shop is nice. Uh, I did I did buy a set of army big set of army painter paints. Oh, and, nice. Hold up, hold up. Um, nice. The preview to the hobby challenge. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and Joe bought like the complete air set, which is like three hundred and eighty dollars, uh, because they were able nice. to work out free shipping to Hawaii. Um, I hey, asked about it a couple times. Hey. Like, oh, we don't really know if we can do that, but like, you know, like after we talked about it a couple times, um, Adam Abramowitz from Army Painter also he came over to the table booth. He's like, "Hey guys, yeah, we 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 talked to some people back in Europe. We, we can hook you up with some free shipping." Like, let's go. Nice. So so anyway, we both spent a nice. lot of a lot of money on paint. Um, so yeah, hey, if you're gonna do we, that, it's probably worth it. <laughs> that's the time. Yeah, <laughs> if I can get ten percent off and free shipping, right? Uh, and it just sent it right straight to my house. Good job, man. That's great. So yep. So yeah, so that was uh, and I I spent a lot of time at the at working at the Tabor booth, um, and those guys are super cool, man. Like uh, you know, they really nice people, uh, really really chill, really chill people. We had a we had a little a little bourbon cart in the back, <laughs> uh, yeah. and and um, yeah. So and they were like, and I got the chance to go out and walk around the vendor hall, walk around the center, go see some stuff, go talk to people. Um, Joe and Todd went and did a Marvel Crisis Protocol demo on I think Saturday or Sunday. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, really, really good. So, yeah, a lot um, of fun man, demos there. <clears throat> uh, well, and then take a moment to to talk to people like like this case because I came over to listen to you talk to somebody about these cases, and you know I have the long term plan of you know if there is a major in hawaii like i gotta go like i gotta take my dad because it's on his bucket list to go to hawaii Mm -hmm. and i'm like well dad i have an excuse we're just gonna go to you know if slaughter fest ever comes back because i heard how awesome slaughter fest was back in the day um but yeah explain to me the this box because like you have such a great pitch i mean if it as long as it doesn't give you ptsd uh to talk to you know to rattle it off but uh so like yeah like you did such a great job you had me sold on it 
these Tabor cases are, I don't know, um, I've had mine for about five or six years. Uh, and, you know, I live in a, a really rough part of Hawaii. Like, I live in, like, li- pretty much literally in a rainforest. There is a yeah. really tall mountain, five-minute walk that direction. Um, and, like, I've got green space out the back, uh, and it, it rains, you know, probably 150, 100, 150 inches a year here. Uh, so, like, it, you know, it's routinely 75, 80% humidity, 80 degrees. Um, you know, this thing's gone five years, no rust, no mold. Uh, and nice. they're just really super, fle- really super flexible, uh, really high quality product. Um, I don't want to, don't want to shill super hard, but, uh, I mean, you can't go buy them right now anyway because we're entirely out. They're entirely out of stock until like. See, cheap. that's what I thought. <laughs> so was they cool. sold guys literally went. all of them. Yeah, that yeah. was cool. So, so yeah, and uh, we have a bunch of these. They had a bunch of these little mats. So, beep. so like yep. these are the little mats that go in their uh, little MDF trays, um, and they make these make mats in all kinds of different sizes. Uh, I have two of the six by four mats, so I got them in eighth edition. Uh, now they sell them in 44 by 60 and they sell a whole bunch of other sizes with a bunch of cool patterns. Uh, they gave me a bunch of the little army, the army tray ones. So I have them all over my little office here as I, I use them as like mouse pads and stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, and that matters so. because so many big tournaments or like Adepticon, uh, like the long war doubles and things like that. Like you mm. have to have a display board. And so like, if you, you, if you don't have the time or the ability to transport massive displays, like I'm sure you saw some of those Heath, just some of the craziness of the long war doubles. I hope, at least I hope you did. Yeah. Some of those guys, well, they I'll go, see. they go ham. They have basically museum level quality pieces uh, for the display boards. Having these little mats that go in your MDF trays that you can match the basing of your models. I mean, it, it, it hits the bare minimum. You don't miss out on points. Uh, but you're also not like killing yourself, you know, because that's like one of those things like if you go for the first time and you don't know what to expect, you know, take the mat, you know, match your bases to the mat, take the mat, do that, see what everybody else is doing. And then the next year, come back and be like, OK, now that I know what everyone else, because some of the people that are at Adepticon for these like hobby challenge segments of events, they're regulars and they already know what they're doing next year when they go to sit down to play this year. So like you can't because you need you know. it. Because you need a you need year, a year to, to do it. some of the stuff that yeah. we saw. Like, oh my god, yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, so like the uh, yeah, that's like a very baseline. You you can get a mat that matches your basing, uh, whatever. And the thing I like, the other thing about the table work cases is you do they uh, you put magnets in the bottom of all your stuff, and they magnetize to the trays, and then you can get little three D printed, basically sockets for all your models go in based on the base sizes and then you can do those up with basing so it kind of it's kind of a diorama and it will oh, help yeah, you helps. transport and also slide into your diorama for your bait for your uh display board requirement so um one other thing i would like to talk about and this is actually something that i was really excited about i didn't even know they were doing this but table war sells these which is, oh yeah yeah, yeah. uh it's hyper so like, important so these are little, basically foam or mat size cutouts that are the same size as all of the uh, ba- oh, I should have bought some of those foot footprints for all of the GW um, terrain layouts. So the official like GW terrain layout, yeah, have have footprints for all the stuff. Table or makes a a basically a mat set that is matched to a bunch of the different types of terrain. Like they have a, a, like a cobblestone one. They have an urban one. They have a, like a forest one. Um, And they were on all the Adepticon tables. Uh, Super, super, super cool product. Uh, I didn't know they were, they made them until I got there on Wednesday and he showed them to me. I was like, Oh snap, these are awesome. And they were going for like 20 bucks. Right. So, um, Oh, which is insane when you can, when you consider how expensive plexiglass is. I'm pretty sure. I think they're 20 bucks. I don't remember. I think they're 20 bucks, but um, yeah. So like, and they're, they're going to be on the website in like end of May or June or something like that. So they rushed out for the, so I can't look it up. (laughs) So you cannot look it up right now. So yeah, I could, I could, I could text, uh, I could text one of the the guys and find out, but, but yeah. um, So if you're going, if like, if you want to 
practice that GW official terrain stuff, like these things, you know, popping. Um, we we can put some pictures up uh, from yeah. the games that we played. Had had all the stuff out there. It was really nice. So, so yeah. So um, it's enough. You know, talking about talking about that. Um, what did what did you do at Adepticon? Because I pretty much worked that booth, and then in the evenings, right, we were yeah. able to go and sneak off and do a couple other things. But I can we can come back to other stuff I did. But I don't want to hear about what your experience was. All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> I've I'm a vet at this point, I guess. Uh, some key things uh, that I found out, like playing the championships with the time slate. Like when I went and played the championship last year, I played the same list for a GT and at least two if I can refer, I think I played two RTTs and a GT and then the champions uh, or the champs at Adepticon and so I could play that list didn't matter the opponent win lose draw in less than three hours like the games just were done and like people yeah. kept trying to bring up me with like the time thing or whatever and I'm just like bro I don't need the chess clock like we'll get this done don't worry and and so I'd highly recommend if you're going to try and play champs at Adepticon, understand it's got that that shorter time frame and it's a lot of games and you got to come in with something that's practiced. Uh, but it is a lot of fun. You meet a lot of really cool people. Uh, and you could be on a live stream with Adam Camilleri calling the game, which uh, he was doing. So I ran mm-hmm. into Adam multiple times uh, and he's and he's so spiffy, right? Because he's doing he's on stream. So he had like a suit all, and tie on the whole day. Yeah, he's all he's all yeah, he's all pimp, pimped out. Right. Yeah, doing so, and I think he's covering yeah the the champs and kill team and things like that. But the best way, thing to do to just like derail him completely was to start talking about old world, and then he just like lit up like a Christmas tree <laughs> and like started like going crazy, and he was just like, and then he'd like have to stop and be like, oh no, I'm gonna be late, I have to go, I'll find you later, and then he'd like take off, and then later you'd come back around and find him somewhere and start talking about old world again. Um, I remember he, I just listened to his podcast on the old world and he was talking about sneaking over to go see the tables and how fun it was. I'm like, but yeah, dude, I constantly running into him, uh, you know, checked in with you at the table war booths, all that stuff. Um, saw Joe met the guys up at the table war. Uh, I played a lot of games. The nice thing is that I haven't had a lot of time to play. And so like, I just got games in of just everything. Like I played old world a couple times with my buddy Chris that That's I traveled cool. with. I uh, played at his house the night because I drove, I got off work on Wednesday, drove to his house. Cause he lives like two hours from the venue, less than mm-hmm. that actually. Uh, and then we drove over on Thursday morning and just kind of hung out. Uh, one of the things you to just be in the building, you don't actually need a badge. You can go in and buy things, but you don't need yeah. actually need a badge mm-hmm. to buy anything. Now to play demos, to play the official events, you need a badge. And I also found out the open play, depending on who, apparently depending on who's running the open play, you may or may not need a badge because it's not an official event. It's just open tables. So uh, I took that money and put it into vendors that I could have had on a badge um, on hobby stuff and things like that and buying drinks for people and things like that, Uh, which is also kind of like a crazy thing about Adepticon is like if you are not used to it because your venues are like Masonic temples or local friendly game stores and things like that. There's a lot of booze at Adepticon. So if you're not <laughs> used to that, they, if you're they not used hard, to yeah. that, you know, that's, like, I, I think, I think and I was, not, I, I think, uh, when I went to LVO, no, sorry, Nova back in 20, I guess it was 18. Um, I was, I was surprised by, the level by, by the amount of like, cause all the vendor, all the gaming halls, everything. Yeah. Like there were people that had like whiskey dispensers built into their display boards and stuff like that. Yep. Right. And like they had a bottle that, at the table. Yep. I was like, <laughs> okay, but you know, like, look, you know, do, um, do whatever you feel you must. Right. It's just try, be, be polite and respectful to your opponents. Exactly. Uh, and that's about, you know, you know, any harm none, do what you will. So, um, but yeah, like, no, it was, a uh, it was, it was a cool time. So, yeah, uh, I think uh, and then so, because because I've been there a while, too, is like they're just I had people playing everything like there were some guys from our 40K community playing Sigmar. Uh, there was one guy that I worked Gen Con with with Games Workshop that was playing Old World. So I went and checked in on him. Uh, I, one of my buddies from my local team, uh, top 16 with orcs. So he went, mm-hmm. I think he, he either went three, one or four. Oh, day one and lost the first round of the next round, which is funny because my buddy Chris and I were supposed to play Friday morning. 
Well, because he top 16, he couldn't play double, the long war doubles with his buddy. And they had like overalls and cowboy hats. And they had a display board that was an orc squig farm with corn. And all the orcs had big nice. farmers hats and overalls. Like it was this cool display. Well, they needed someone to be the partner. And so Chris said he'd play because he plays, he's world-class orc player. And so my buddy to play games with wasn't there. So I just kind of wandered around all morning, but then they ran out, realized the huge mistake in their plan was that the guy playing the top 16 table needed all 20 of the grots that he brought to play that game. And so the 20 grots <laughs> they needed to play the long war doubles wasn't there. And so I ended up, they, they got hold of me and said, Hey man, we don't have enough models. So I go to the, uh, and this is like the only place you can find this guy. Now the bits guy, everybody know if you know, you know, the bits guy, the yeah. Toledo game room guy, uh, he, he doesn't go to Gen Con anymore. He just does Adepticon. And so he has tons and tons of pre-painted pre-based models. So I went through his whole booth and I bought 20 grots slash grot equivalent models that were fully painted and based on round 25s and just ran across the con with these things to their table and just slapped them on the table and said they're the minis so if that's you great. get oh, to that's so cool <laughs> that's awesome so if you get to adepticon and you find out you're missing something uh that is the place to go because they probably have what you're looking for you know, I, I ran into the Toledo Game Room guy uh at LVO or sorry no, god dang it, nice. it no, Nova and I was like and I, I spent hours rifling through this yeah. stuff. I didn't spend as much time this time because I I basically have everything I need, uh, which is a bold statement. Yeah. But um, like back then, because I was, I was still only a year or two back into the hobby after being out for five or six years. So I was going through and finding stuff that I... Because I, I was at that point, I was also, I was playing Drakari as very heavily as yeah. well as Dark Angels. So, so I got a lot of stuff from him. Um, actually, I got a bunch of... I don't have it, but like I got like a bunch of uh, Forge World custodies tanks that were nicely painted from him for pretty cheap so nice. anyway but yeah so that very a lot of really cool demos um at your booths actually i will let me shill that like so there's a company called game envy uh yep yep g a g a m e n v y so the 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 first and last e in the middle is kind of combined yep. um a couple of really cool products there so one they have these wet palettes this is the coolest wet palette I've ever seen because it like latches, right? So it can actually oh, seal. Um, and then the the sponge in this wet palette is high den it's high density foam on the top. Oop, I just almost dropped half of it. Yeah, it's high density foam on the top, and then so it like you know, holds the water stable but doesn't like super oversaturate it. And then there's low density foam on the bottom. That will basically, you know, immobilize and hold a nice reservoir of the water. Uh, it's got like a little thing at the top to, as a vent, so you can control the humidity in it. And it's got you know a little super cool product. I just walked up and said, "Yeah, that's no, that's cool." Why is this? And why is this better than Army Painters? Why should I buy it? He just went through it. I'm like, done. Give it to me right now. <laughs> so yeah, and oh they yeah, actually no, just yeah, announced. I... Uh, they just just announced a partnership with Ninjon, so you get these with Ninjon branding too. Oh, so. nice. Yeah, because, yeah, my army painter one's always drying out. So that's cool. That, yeah, the la as soon as you said latches, I was like, what was that? And, and they also sell, I don't know, have them to hand, they're little uh, machined copper corner pieces. So they hold down the, the wet, the pallet paper, and it's copper, so it's a biocide. So stuff doesn't grow in it. Oh, so if you're one of those nice. guys that have been putting pennies in the corners to try and keep mold, I was like, once again, Hawaii stuff yeah. grows everywhere like you can't stop it from growing like if you got if you don't like critters living in your house don't come live in hawaii because you just cannot stop it it's a tropical island so but but these little like high quality like pure copper machine things to hold down just super awesome biocide it kills everything so your palate stays clean for much much longer i always have a problem with the army painter palette of the the paper warping and it touches yep. the top of the lid and then it sticks to it. I'm like, ah, yeah, anyway. So I'm, I'm super excited to start using this thing. And they also have yeah. these really awesome lights. So this little guy, boop, that just, I have, if I can turn my camera real quick, I don't want to yeah. monitor arm. So um, <clears throat> it has a, uh, it clamps to the back of your desk, or in my case, on the, to the top of my little thing right there. 
and <clears throat> it has a uh, independently adjustable. Oh then, yeah. Yeah. And then they, you can change the color on them and the brightness for all of them individually. And then it, that's will awesome. Pack up super duper small. Um, and it was like 80 bucks. Really cool. Oh, wow. Really yeah, big that's fan. Really yeah. Good. Really good. So <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. So I'm, yeah. so, well, and I remember um, when Game Envy, the first year I went, Game Envy was there and they were just like selling hobby handles, like just like the bare bones, minimum. Oh, yeah, they're the guys that did the little hobby, hobby handles. handles. And so oh. I would, like, they were like the, like when Games Workshop came out with them, like the original hobby Ooh. handles. They, they got those too? Nice. Yeah. I bought this little flat pack, put it together. And then I remember Game Envy was giving those out like like they were in like the swag bags and like that was their big thing. So that's pretty cool for me. It's really cool to see them doing stuff like that. And like they've gone from like oh they're like the cheap knockoff uh, Duncan's you know what plugs um, to no like they had like they're their own entity now and they do cool stuff. Like that's really cool to see that they yeah. that they've grinded they a, and they're getting some. Independent they had a success. big booth. Cool. They had a lot of they had a lot of cool stuff. I mean, they. I think they ran out of those lights on like day one. I was on a lift. So I got it shipped to me a couple days later. But uh, nice. So, yeah, I I um I didn't spend a okay. I spent a lot of money at Depticon. I didn't spend <laughs> a lot, lot of money. <laughs> so I um I, I understand what you mean because yeah. I had that conversation with my financial advisor before I went. I said I need you mm -hmm. to help me figure out what to do with this money that I've come into. Because I'm going to this convention where I know who sells the five thousand dollar a piece minis. I'm going to the booth where they sell the five thousand. I know the person personally that if I said, <laughs> "Give me one of those," I have the money to buy it now. They would more than willingly hand it to me with all the accessories. And he was just like, "Yeah, what?" And I'm like, "We're gonna just find a place for this money to, to go before I spend it." <laughs> we're gonna need to invest this right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go put that into a mutual fund for you, sir. So. So yeah, um, man, yeah, it was Adepticon's a great time, dude. Like uh, the big, you know, the really nice facility. The Renaissance hotels are always really nice. Yep. Um, so I didn't realize it was a Renaissance branded hotel. I, I guess because like, I'm a dingus, but uh, you know, <laughs> Renaissance Renaissance is a Marriott brand. Marriott's a nice hotel chain. Um, I stayed at a Renaissance hotel for three weeks in Norfolk when I was in Virginia. Oh yeah, I remember you went out there uh, yeah. last year, and that was a nice joint. Um, they have like. I remember that was the first time I ever went to a hotel and was like, what do you mean I have 500 megabit per second Wi-Fi? <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then my, my wife and I just booked a trip to Vancouver uh, later this year. Oh, uh, nice. To go see a, oh, to go see a concert. Go. And we're, and we're going to stay, we're going to stay at a Renaissance. So, um, nice. well, in that yeah. place, I want to also point out it had like a bar, like a restaurant with a bar separate from like the <laughs> bar restaurant. And then there was like a Starbucks brand inside of it. And then, yeah. On the convention side, they had um, like a place with like rotating. Oh, then then across from the bar was another sort of like pop up rotating every day, different meal. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then and then downstairs they had like generic like chicken fingers, pizza, burgers. And you just had it food, stacked yeah. up. You grabbed it. You paid. And then in the back of the convention center, the plane halls, they had mm. small concession stands. So like if you go in and you're worried about food, just at the convention center in the hotel, there's a lot of options. Uh, this will probably scare I, I you, Heath. I didn't have to leave that convent. I didn't have to leave that hotel for the yeah. whole time. I like we uh, didn't. We didn't leave the hotel for food until yeah. the last night. We all went to uh, the um, the Churrasco place. Uh, I don't know if it's called if it was Texas Day Brazil or. Oh, I've heard about Chao, that place. Yes, yeah. So I got invited yeah, to that. And all... Just didn't just didn't happen. But I I heard so. about that. It was good. Was it good? Oh, I heard yeah. it was good. Yeah, it was good. It's a good one. They um, I mean, it's the same kind of the Ch Churrasco. It's a trascaria, right? So it's a Brazilian style barbecue where they they prepare the meat on a trasco sword uh, and then bring it all around. And uh, it went with uh, Todd and Doug and Joe and Amory and then um, Dave nice. from Mini War Gaming uh, showed up as well. And uh, so we we all had a really good chat and ate a bunch of you know, man, uh, trasco. <laughs> there's there's, yeah. there's there's one in there's one in Guam, uh, which is a common haunt. Whenever I go there, I end up at a there yeah. and just get. You eat so much food, you get a meat sweat, and but yeah, yeah, because 
because uh, this will drive me nuts because I've gone so many times and like where I work, like I just get overwhelmed with the noise sometimes, and I just need to get out. Mm-hmm. So like I actually spent a lot of time walking between that hotel and the hotel where all the historical people work. That's usually where we were parking, at least on the first day. And then mm-hmm. <laughs> this is this is how bad it was. There's a Costco over the highway on the other side, and just because I was cheap. And I, when I got hungry, I would just like go out, walk across the highway to Costco to get like the dollar fifty hot dog and $1. soda, $1. Or, like, hot the dog. Four, yeah, or the four dollar <laughs> chicken bake and bring them back for my buddies. And like, so like I spent a lot of time like just walking back and forth between Costco and uh, the convention center. And then there's like an Irish pub that I've been wanting to go to for years and years and years. At a depth, oh, I, I saw never that. got we to go this that, year. Yeah. yeah, because I'd been to it's a franchise, and I've been to the one. In New Orleans, when I thought about moving to New Orleans, I went there because I looked up whether or not there was an Arsenal football club fan group in New Orleans. And there is. And every year they have a Gooner Gras where they have like Mardi Gras, but for Arsenal people. And like they've flown like the big name YouTubers from England that go to all the Arsenal games in England and around Europe and around the world, actually, because like they fly to Singapore for like the summer tours and stuff. Like they flew those guys to New Orleans to like have their Gooner Gras one year. So like they're kind of they're a real big deal. And so i got hold of them on Facebook and met them at the Irish pub where they hang out and talk to them and found out like one guy got married at my cousin's uh, church that he owns that he rents out that Beyonce's sister got married in or something like that. It's part of the the great crazy Hmm. family lore. But anyway, it's all the same chain. So I was like, Oh, I got to go. I see if this one's good. And the pricing there is fantastic. Like you could get a big, like a tall of old style for less than $4. So when you're at the con spending eight to $10 on a can of beer, you could just walk out, take a 10 minute walk around the corner to the Irish place and get twice, the, you know, three or four I times have, the beer for the same price. I have heard people talk about when you go to Depticon, got to go to this place. And it just, it didn't, it didn't work out because we, uh, you know, had, we were, we were booked for most of the time. I think like, yep. f- cause like, cause you know, so the vendor hall closes at what? Six, seven. Yes. I don't know. Yep. So, so we worked until close, close the vendor hall. And then we went and grabbed some food Right. And then the first night, like I had to go back and give, you know, bring Joe some chow. And then the second night, um, we wanted to get games in. So we went to uh, the. So, yeah, so Thursday night, it was like Friday night, we went and, and went down to the open gaming hall and uh, we were able to, and like I got to play against Todd uh, and with his Space yeah. Wolves. And, and, the, and uh, that didn't go super well. Um, and I'm trying to learn how to play the company of hunters list. And I made a couple of, yeah, I just can always underestimate how far and fast thunder wolves can charge in Stormlands. Yep. But so, um, but that was cool. We got to play there. And then uh, the next day we also wanted to play, play some more. So I got to play against you. Yeah. And that was, and that was exciting. So uh, dark angels V fallen uh, who is who that's up to you to decide. Uh, and we got some pictures uh, well, that from that game. We I got to get up here. I got to get that picture <laughs> so. from Adam because Adam Camilleri saw us oh, doing yeah, it. Yeah. He came flying over to get a selfie. There was actually a couple yeah. of people who would come up to us be, that were also Dark Angels players. They're like, oh my gosh, you know, who's the, who, which one is Alfarius, uh, yeah. Azrael, and which so, one's so the actual Azrael? And just like, the, people were having the, a blast just seeing it. There's uh, somebody at the table behind us because we were playing in the main gaming hall, like at the end yeah. of the, at the end of the numbered tables. And uh, we started playing, and somebody said Dark Angels and just turned around and walked over. And so, yeah. Yep. Uh, so we, so we, so, so we that, that was the podcast. Cool. If that's you, thanks for stopping by. What's up, man? Yep. Yep. Um, that was pretty cool. And there was a, there was a, another, uh, person, uh, gentleman, I think by the name was Casey that stopped by the, the booth to say hi to me, said he was a listener. So shout out. What's up? Comment. Nice. Um, so yeah, so that was cool. That was the first time it's ever happened to me. I'm not a YouTube personality. I play one, yeah. of I suppose, but so, um, so yeah, so man, uh so yeah that was a really game, good time that yeah. game was fun let's do it let's talk about that let's talk about that game i because i had some like you said you played todd i played a couple of two on twos against guard with a, a custodian mm-hmm. player that is a buddy of mine that i taught how to paint at gen con i think i talked about him that he's always trying to get golden demon and whatnot so we were playing we played upstairs the first night um because the horse heresy guys once they're done playing for the day they let people come up and play on their table so if you want to go play on a fun narrative table just like crazy just craziness go play up there uh, and then we I did walk the next through that day. hole and it looked nice. It looked really nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the next day we played in the back end of the open gaming table. And that one 
I think we lost that. I won the first. We won the first game the first night. The second game we lost by a point. Uh man, it was it was so close though. Like there were some real awesome bonsai moves right at the end, and I blew up a. Uh, I got like it was severely injured to begin with, but then in my second turn of trying to kill this Bane Blade, I like one shot it with a thunder strike. Like I was like, I'll start the fire and the thunder strike <laughs> and see how this goes. And the thunder strike's like, nah, I got this boo boo and just took it out in one go. I was like, all right, that's, that's pretty just sweet. Aced. Just aced. Yeah. But yeah, we, we needed like some crazy cards and some crazy like 10 inch charges to go off. And they all went off and set us up to win the game. And we just couldn't kill the Lord Solaire. He, he did it. Like he survived with like one or two wounds did an OC boost thing, and that won the, the other guys the game. And, but outside of that, we it was it was awesome. But yes, our game we were. I don't. Do you have the game on your phone? Um, my phone's charging the other. I, I pull, pull it up. do. Hold on. Hold on. It's in my tablet. Um, but I was running. I played Company of Hunters the first game. I was sort of on the fence about it. There were some things there that I like didn't like. Uh, I ran Gladius in the second game, which is what I played against Heath. Uh, and like the big feature I had in that is like I we brought back the the big squad of Black Knights. I think Heath also brought the Black mm-hmm. Knights, but I ran it in Gladius, uh, and I ran it with uh, the upgrade with the Bolter Discipline or Fire Discipline. So we had the, the extra Daka, had the ten man Hellblaster squad with Azrael, uh, had the Thunderstrike, brought a Repulsor Executioner, brought a did I have a Dreadnought in that list? I felt like I had. I don't think yes. you did. I put the pictures. The I put the pictures in our in our Facebook chat or our messenger chat. Okay. I had I had two dreadnoughts. Maybe you, you had a ballistas. No, no I think I just repulsor. had a regular. Re- I, did I have a brutalis? One game. One of the games I played up there, I had a brutalis because now all three games are kind of bleeding no, into each other. You you I see. I'm looking at the pictures right like now. I, <laughs> you have a okay. a dark talon. Uh yeah. Or a nephilim. I don't remember which. I think it's a dark talon. You had a gladiator. Uh, looks like a valiant and yep, the repulsor the valiant. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the so, thing that I'm thinking is the redemptor was the with the net spot on the table is actually the valiant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the dark talent I was subbing it in as a nephilim because we looked at it from the okay. lists from the po- yeah. podcast before. And I thought, oh, I'll try this out, see how it goes. And then you had yep. the the storm raven with the redemptor got- in there. Yep, I've got the list here. If you want, uh, I'll put it into into the chat or into the show notes. Uh, gotcha. Do 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 do. Sorry, I'm trying to edit on my phone. <laughs> That's with all right. The with the Google Documents app, and I've never done this before. So let's see how it goes. All right. Boop, boop, there yeah, go. no worries. And dude. paste, paste. It doesn't know how to paste. paste. Um, anyway, I'll. I'll send this to you. We'll 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 throw it up at a graphic, but I'll just read it to yeah, you. Yeah, we can so we can do. We'll do a, we'll do our side by side thing. All right. Uh, so I ran. I said company hunters. Uh, kind of mentioned this. To talk about what the plan was for this in the last episode, but I had Azrael, uh, a Ravenwing command squad with the recon hunter enhancement, so they could do their nine inch scout move. Uh, and Samael, those were my characters. So that's. Hundred, it's three hundred and eighty or so points of characters, uh, three eighty five. So then I had an outrider squad, just one three man, one three man outrider squad. The full, the ten man hell, uh, hell blasters. Um, what have I done to this list since then? Good lord, I can look something different. Because <laughs> all right, so I had the the not, so I had this, uh, the yeah the ten hell bla- uh ten hell blasters the. Six uh, Black Knights to go with the Command Squad, uh, a Thunder Strike, a Hail Strike, a Storm Raven, and a pair of Redemptors. And, and a Tech Marine. That was too. the list. And a Dark I Shroud. Not have dark a, shroud I there. did not have a Tech Marine, but I did have a Dark Shroud. You are correct. Did I have a Dark Shroud? Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I had. I definitely had a Dark Shroud. I did not have a Tech. Yeah, because I wasn't so, shooting because. There was there was when we get to it, there was a turning point in the game, and the big part of why I did what I did was because I knew there was a dark shroud on the table, and that changed mm-hmm. the math in my head, and that's why I did what I did, and it ended up yeah being a big. I'm looking at the pictures right now. Yeah, there's a hail strike, thunder strike, dark shroud, storm raven, uh, and uh, redemptor, redemptor, nine bikes, and then three bikes with Azra- with uh, Sam Isle. So um, 
the way this played out, uh, and I've got the stuff over here. So I believe uh, who went first? I think who I went first. first. Uh, and I did, I mean, we'll, we'll fast forward to the first two turns here real quick. Yeah. Cause everything you, happened you on went, turn three you went first. Yeah. So uh, this was, um, I'm, it was cruci- It was crucible of battle, uh, yep. five objectives. So the slanties, the slant, uh, the slanty corners. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there we go. Okay. And, uh, and I'm, I'm very cagey. This is one of the reasons why I also like my games can be over pretty quickly is that I feel like my null deployments are somewhat good. And I've also learned from playing a lot of 10th edition with Space Marines and 9th edition, basically any edition. Um, sometimes I overcommit too early and then I just pick up my whole army. And and so like the first two turns of this game was me just kind of hiding behind things and waiting to see what Heath would do. And then Heath realizing that's what it was and standing there looking at me and looking at the board. And I'm just kind of sitting there with my arms crossed looking at Heath like, well, do something. Yeah. And that's the basically first, what the, the first, first three two... was. The first turn and a half, the first turn and a half was, uh, so like we were both trying to, because we both play fairly like tight reactive style lists where like, I need you to commit to something so that I can counter that. Right. And then create a yep. localized over overmatch. Right. And then yep. once you do that, it kind of shifts the balance. So what ended up happening was, uh, so let's see, we'll throw the, let's put this first picture up and. Um, you had a unit of blade guard with a captain on your left flank, my right. And then you, uh, and I, I moved my bikes up and then you, so you move your blade guard up to tr- hit this objective. I kind of moved my bikes up and measured it so that it was what I felt was a, you know, a, a, a long charge away. I forgot yeah. that you could go into the assault doctrine, advance and charge. Uh, and so you made like a, you moved advanced, made like a 10 inch charge and yeah. or, or made it what a long charge got blade guard with a captain who popped his, uh, you know, his once per game, you know, finest hour and just went nuts on that unit. And yeah, I lost that was pretty all, awesome. all the bikes, but the Raven wing champion who had like two yep. wounds left, um, past his battle shock. And then he, yeah. And then he fell back. Right. And that Raven wing champion ended up, doing other stuff. So my, um, so, so you pushed, knocked me off of an objective, took away one of my big units. And I was like, okay. So on that turn, I was able to, I dropped my hell blasters out, uh, in between the hell blasters and my, uh, I think my storm Raven and maybe the redemptor. Um, I was able to, uh, one of the redemptors, I was able to kill all the hell, kill that whole unit. Right, and then the one rem- the remaining Ravewing champion who hadn't died yet, or had fallen like all the way back to my home objective to hold it while they all moved forward, and then I had kind of started developing my left flank with uh, Azrael and the Outriders moving up to touch an objective, and then the Hell Blasters and the I had moved the Dark Shot up to kind of cover all that area, <clears throat> and then the next turn. So it's like we had basically traded on my right, your left. So I, you put yep. the blade guard up, took away my my black knights. I took away your blade guard uh, with range shooting from my hell blasters, and then you moved your airplane up. And the intent was that and you moved, you got your hell blasters moving in that direction. But what I did, I think on turn like end of two or, or beginning of three, was I shot uh, Samuel with the outriders. Yep around the center of the board, you know, made a big move between your repulsor and uh, your, I guess, infiltrators, and then tried to make a yep. charge into your tech Marine. Um, but Chris was at, Chris reminded me, no, no, you have to move when I, so I made the charge, but when I want to pile in, I have to pile in towards the closest model, yep. regardless of whether or not I have, I am in combat with it. So I wanted to, just, to get all the way in kill your tech Marine and just start piling into your backfield. But I had to, split a little bit. So I wasn't able to kill the tech Marine, but I was able to get Samuel with outriders into basically your, your, your face, uh, which yep. was what my desire was. And so that was what I think 
forced you. So at that point, you turned your Hellblasters around from developing your left flank to coming back to respond to the middle. And that's what swung the game because that allowed me to push and hold the center. And then with the, if I move the storm Raven up, drop the redemptor out in the middle of the board, move the dark up to cover everything. My hell blasters were able to jump back into the storm Raven as it, and then it shot over. And that's what kind of like you stop pushing forward to hold the left. And I was able to, I didn't have enough movement to move my Raven wing champion from my objective to that other right hand objective. So I used that stratagem, yep. uh, where they, for one CP, I pull him into reserve at the end of your turn, and I bring him back in from reserve at the beginning of my turn, yep. and that jumped Beautiful. him on an objective, and that's what held the obje- held that objective. And then somehow the Nephilim did not kill it. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Yeah. That was unfortunate yep. for you. But, um, but yeah, your your bikes moved up, and they killed the Storm Raven, um, and my Hellblasters jumped out, uh, with Azrael and their counter fire killed the bikes and it all. And uh, yeah, so it just kind of everything collapsed from there. Yep. So, yep. But the, 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 the Samael with the, that 20 auto, basically auto yep. six inch advance uh, was really like pushing into your line to turn, to, to break your momentum was, I think what, what swung the game. So yeah. What's your no, perspective yeah, yeah. on that? Yeah, th- there was that, and then the the other decision is that I moved forward and decided to commit to the middle of the board with my thunder strike, which I deep struck. Oh um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, to try and, and get I, shots I did on, a turn where I, on the redemptor. Yeah, yeah, and I tried to kill redemptor and didn't kill it, and I probably shouldn't have done it because I probably was going to kill the redemptor through the dark shroud through the damage reduction anyway. But I was kind of it had been two turns of nothing going on, and I thought, you know what, we're here to play a game let's play a game and <laughs> i went for it just like with the with the blade guard because you were looking at it chris was looking at it and he was just like you're not going to make that that's dumb you shouldn't have done that and i just kind of look at him gave him a little bit of the uh had i had my two dice in my hand i gave him a little bit of the michael jackson uh yeah, dance crotch that, dance yeah. <laughs> and then just threw the dice across the table and rolled a natural 10 and you both just kind of yeah. looked at me and i'm like see i i knew it was gonna well, happen <laughs> well here we go here i did here but, now here we go yeah <laughs> but we but it worked uh and there was also a blade guard champion or ancient in there, so there was an additional oh, yeah, yeah. attack on top of the additional attacks. So like there was just the and there was guard... an honor vehement in there. So like I just yeah. went ballistic. So that piece I played it the that's night a, before in the doubles. That's a killy unit. That's and a so I brought unit. it to this. Yeah, and so that was fun. So that's a the, unit. The, like I I got beat pretty bad, but in terms of like fun things I played with that were fun, like six blade guard with an ancient and a captain with the vehement. With Lance and the Lance, and the extra AP and that takes them to AP three and oh uh, yeah, that's really Ugh. good. It's it's it that did a lot fun. of work. That's a lot of attacks because the Blade Guard Ancient can can give them all an additional attack once yep. per game, right? Yep. And so that was just like I was like, oh my god, this unit has a lot of output. So and it's not that expensive, really. I didn't feel like once I built it and looked no, at, it, I'm like, that's no, no, no. not that expensive compared to it's like really running not. ten Terminators. And then the other thing that yeah. again, not I didn't feel like it was super expensive, but was fun was running that um, nine man of bikes. Like I know you didn't really get to use yours, but I got to use mine in the sense and like and then like I feel like that was a different philosophy too. Where like you're using it to develop. And I remember we talked about it while I was doing it. Like mine basically just sat in my backfield for three or four turns and just did absolutely nothing. And that came from Adepticon because my first time playing there, I played, uh, I think I've talked about this a lot, actually playing the Eldar guy that just had bright lances in the back of his table. And he's like, yeah, these things don't come out till the end of the game when I know I can just mop up. So they're just going to sit here out of, out of sight, out of mind. And their relative value goes up a lot in the mid game when the stuff that can, that can just instantly kill them is gone. Because they, yep. yeah, so. And so I pulled it out. We did the super bike thing into the Storm Raven. We charged into the Storm Raven. We rolled as many fours as four ups as we could into the Storm Raven. And we blew up the Storm Raven, which was very satisfying. Knowing full well the thing inside the Storm Raven was probably going to kill me afterwards. I was I was very happy at the fact that, like, this thing that we all know is in the meta, that everyone's playing with, sometimes two of them, there is a piece two dark angels that like, if you're dealing with this and you want a fun piece to deal with it, the nine man black Knight blob with a turn of shooting and a turn of combat, you can just 
yeah, pour into this we'll thing and kill it. So we'll get it done. if you want to, you want a dark angels, you know, thing, you know, cause again, as we're talking about like a lot of these lists, like you have Ezreal, I'm a dark angels list. Cause I have Ezreal. I'm like, well, if you want to be more dark angel throw nine bikes in that list and then just go beat up on stuff. And it was, yeah, it was fun. And cause yeah, that, to be fair, like the, I uh, felt like if those bikes came around the corner to my blade guard, I was probably going to pick them up. Like I was like, yeah, I have to hit this 10 inch charge or I'm picking up all these blade guard. Because I don't know. Nine I don't know, like, plasma guys would have been rough. Uh, yeah. They shoot good, but they, 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 they fight into monsters and vehicles a lot better than they do in infantry because they're only right. one damage weapons. So, um, yeah, <laughs> but you have so, a lot of attacks. So if there's only two or three have blade guard left and you have all the, and you have all the, like you were just to dice them to death. Cause it's one of the things like, you're going to come around the corner, you're going to shoot them. You're going to kill 80% of the models in that squad. So there's three guys left and then you go in and just plank the rest of them to death. And, and if yeah, you don't um, like, I don't have enough to really counter kill your counter swipe your whole squad back. I feel the way about the bikes that I think I'm starting to feel about Hellblasters is you need to try and try and hold off with them. Have other stuff yep. in the list so that you don't need to commit them on turn one or turn two because the yep. relative value yep. they will have in the mid game is much higher because, you know, the opponent's going to see, okay, I need to kill that right now. That's my thing, right? Or you need to try and keep them safe on turn one and turn two. So, yeah, which I felt like we both did a pretty good job because we both yeah. were kind of having that. And then the other no, funny a, thing, my buddy Chris... Uh, was watching us is that he's his biggest joke and the way he just trashes space marine players all the time with Drukari is he's like the first thing I see space marine players do is they move to the middle of the table like turn one turn two they just put something in the middle of the table automatically mm -hmm. and then from there he's like I move around them I do all these things I isolate I create these localized overwhelming forces yeah. and I just pick them all up um, and a yep. part of that is the fact that we're all used to playing with Oath of the Moment in previous editions of the game where like you got points for just standing in the middle of the board uh, but that doesn't work like that anymore. You have to actually draw a card or, t you know, take deploy teleport homers as a secondary to like actually get rewarded for standing in the middle of the board. So if you can break sort of that mindset of like, don't just go stand in the middle of the board where everyone can see you and shoot you. Uh, well, some things work out a little bit better. Stand, standing in the middle of the board gives you the advantage of one. There's always an objective there and it, yep. and it gives you a, you know, kind of a maneuver advantage in that wherever you decide you need to be, you're kind of have more access to that. Like, you know, right. I can move left, I can move right, I, I can do all these other things, but at the, at the expense of it gives everyone the ability to hit you, right? You're, you're, ex right. you're overextended to some degree. So if you have an incredibly durable unit, like right. you know, 10 Deathwing Knights or something that, that can survive it, like that's great, right? Um, but uh, without without that just super high durability, right, um, or some other shenaniganry to make it that way, then you're gonna have a you're gonna have a rough time. So, yeah. So, so yeah. That's uh, also like in right, the so mirror yeah, so match, we, like in a mirror match, like line yourself up for when the guy goes to the middle of the board because he's probably gonna do it. So just find all the mm -hmm. shooting lanes, put big stuff right there, and then when they go there, you just go. All right, now everything kind of touches around this corner, and we kill whatever's there. Good luck getting back to that objective, buddy. Uh, but yeah, no, that was... Uh, I mean, I had a good time. I, I know I got trounced, but it was just so awesome to finally get to play you, Heath. Uh, that wasn't Tabletop Simulator. Not that I... I mean, I enjoyed getting to figure out how to do that. Yeah. But like, it was one of those things where like, I got to the end of Tabletop Simulator and realized that the thing I really enjoy about Warhammer isn't necessarily the rules of the game. It's like, they're my models. And like, I get to look at your models and like, I just realized how yeah. important the hobby side of it was to me. And that's what kind of yeah. made me go, uh, I kind of want to wait till we can play in person again, because the whole just digital thing didn't do it for me. Um, yeah, it's, um, but yeah, to see your stuff, it's finally, yeah. it was cool. Yeah. It was cool no, to I, finally I see your stuff. I agree. So, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was cool. And it was, it was a good game. We had a good time and we we powered through that game in like under two hours. I yeah. Think. Because Joe like, and I'm, I'm Todd magic. were playing <laughs> at the table next to us, and we were packing up, and they were like, "Wait, you're done?" Like they were like at the end of turn one or something like that. I yeah. Think. So <laughs> I was down there for like two more hours. So we had to send somebody up to get uh, the bulgogi fries from the from the bar oh, to nice. bring them down for for dinner. Because if you have not had that bar's bulgogi Korean you know, bulgogi fries, oh my god, they are amazing. I don't know if wow, I, they had those the last little, time I went there. Little slices of pork uh, simmered and done up in gochujang. And oh my God, that's so good. 
anyway that sounds amazing so yeah uh all right right. so man what else what else to talk about that was Um, that was sort of for me that was the main event i told so many people i was like you i'm clearing my schedule like i i specifically didn't sign up for events didn't do this didn't do that because i'm like i have to find time to play heath and i knew with the vendor hall having worked cons as a vendor like you're gonna have very limited time it's gonna be way late in the day you know like i knew it was gonna be hard so i'm like i'm gonna keep my schedule open so i can play heath and like and I'm just so glad that we got to do that because like even at work and like my family, I'm like, yeah, I got to mm-hmm. go. Like I really wasn't, I wasn't going to go to Adepticon. I was like, I, I overdid it last year and I was like, ah, I could probably pass it up this year. Then you said you were going, I'm like, all right, got to go. Can't, 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 yeah. can't miss this opportunity to see Heath. I'm glad I, and again, like the, the, the I... fun part is just when you go so many times too, is like I was saying on that Friday where I was going to play, like I just walked around and saw people I'd played, in previous years and just talk to them like, Oh, you guys came back. How, you know, some guy, he owned a game store in like New York on a be- like on like, um, like the outer banks, like think outer banks, you know, resorty Lake place in New York. That's where these guys were from. And so to see them and ask mm-hmm. how they were games were going, uh, that Brazilian place, this guy that used to come to our events from Illinois in Northern Indiana that I played at Adepticon before. He's like, Oh, we're all going as like a 20 man team. If you guys want to come, if you got the time. And I said, uh, we'll see. I'm not sure if we're going to have the time, but like, just, I mean, just walking through and then, uh, this, you'll like this Heath, uh, my buddy, Chris, he was there getting his badge and s- some guy, you know, he put his badge on, it has his name on it. And this guy turns around and says, June. And he turned around and looked and it was his buddy that he hadn't seen since they'd been in Iraq together in his like oh, first snap. or second tour. And the guy, awesome. I guess, owns a game store in Louisville, Kentucky. And Chris used to own a game store. So they started talking about that. But yeah, these two guys like just had not seen each other in over a decade properly. And that's, great. Uh, that's super cool. And they met at Adepticon. So like that's the that's just the coolest part about going to these things multiple times. Even if you're not signed up to do a bunch of crazy tournaments or, or painting classes or whatever, just going and seeing people, bumping into people, walking. Like, like I said, I spent a whole morning just walking in, checking in on everybody and, and having a good time. And like I sat at the uh, elevator for like 15 minutes. I had to get off the phone with my dad because just the number of people that I knew that were coming off the elevator, I was waving to and they were stopping to talk. I'm like, Dad, I got to go. I got to talk to these people. And like it just yeah. kept ha- like it was awesome. It's so much yeah. fun. You, it's 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 like a big reunion every year. So highly recommend. I would uh like we we wanted to do this episode two weeks ago, but I uh I had that uh, a pretty nice set of non COVID con crud, and I was I was yep. in a rough spot <laughs> the weekend after, and then, and then Bailey was had commitments the following week. So um so yeah, so th- we have a lot to, we have a lot to get through. Like I said, we have a bunch of people we talk to that we're gonna try and. Maybe get uh, get up on the show, talk more about this kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, yeah, God, man. So I'm glad that I told you I was going to Adepticon because I had this vague idea of trying to like not tell you and then show up and surprise you. Um, oh so yeah, I'm glad that I that would have gone bad. <laughs> so, that would have been terrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, all right. So uh, ready to go to the hobby cha- the hobby challenge? Since we, I mean, you kind of talked about it a little bit. You got sure. that cool light. You got the yeah. Um, yep. Yep. What else? You got you got the pad. Anything else? So, the paint. So I, uh, yeah, I got the big set of paints. Um, I got the the wet palette. I got the light. Um, What's that goofy thing that's red of... and yellow over your right shoulder? I can see it, and I don't know what that is. There's something over your shoulder. Oh, that's it's a, red and yellow. That's, an, that's a, a it's a Badger airbrush holder. Eh, it's it's locked down. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a it's like gotcha. so when I I did this big desk redesign. Um, I like. I still don't know. My my airbrush compressor is like down here on the floor, underneath the gotcha. desk. Uh, and I don't know. I'm gonna get like a little thing to put it on. Um, the problem is I'm left-handed, and so having the free oh, end of the desk yeah. be on the right, I haven't quite come through the ergonomics of what I'm gonna do with that yet. But um, we're I get, told we're, you I'm we're, left-handed we're too, right? Out, so no. How's this so just come up? This whole time we okay. never knew that we were both left-handed. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> oh right. man so so yeah That's whatever right. but yeah no so i i spent a huge amount of time i i basically finished this uh like kind of office remodel so i've yeah, got it's so cool see if it's different so but um i've got a this right here is a six foot long desk and this here is an eight foot long desk so i have a 10 foot by six foot l 
with a computer in the middle. And then so I can just turn here and I've got hobby stuff with a light. And then I've got room for two more people to sit over here so I can have like hobby days and that kind of stuff. So so it's been something I've wanted to do for a long time. I've been musing about it and finally found the way to pull the trigger, uh, you know, a few months ago. And so I'm That's pretty cool. just about done with it. And I had to do a lot of, you know, do a lot of learning. If, you ever want, if anyone wants to do something like this, hit me up and I'll send you my lessons learned. Um, <laughs> the biggest one is these are all, these are all uh, black iron. Whoop, I'm going to shake that too much, my camera. But these are all black iron uh, or black steel, like plumbing pipes just from Home Depot. Uh, and they are not as precisely manufactured as I had thought they were. So when oh, I no. designed it and I said, okay, because this section plus this coupling plus this is all the same stack up, it's going to be the same length and distance as this other side. Not the case. Um, oh boy. So that required a lot more, <laughs> a lot more finagling and individual kind of redesign and attention to, to get it all sorted out. It was like, how come these are the same pipes and the same things but they are like a half inch difference in length. And that affects oh, how yeah. the shelving were. And just, it took some, ugh. yeah. But, uh, and then like, I've got a nice little, uh, a big rolling, you know, shelf underneath here. And then I'll probably get some more little bits to go underneath there to get finished up, put in storage. And I've got, you know, a bookcase, this bookcase right here, there's another one on this wall. I'll send you a picture to, I think I already did nice. send you a picture to put up into the, uh, into the thing. And it blocks one of my windows, but I've got it all designed so I can flip two unions and this whole side desk right here slides out so I can get to the window to clean it or open it or shut or whatever I want to do. So, but um, yeah, I went, went fairly, not as smoothly as I would have wanted, but no engineering project ever does. Engineering is an iterative exactly. thing, not a, not a not a revolutionary thing contrary to what you see in the movies so well and, but, and you're also um, a hobbyist yeah. so just the fact that you had to get more into it like oh this isn't just as simple like i gotta get into it you're like hmm. there you go yeah Turn i mean in, like this, this is you you want to figure out like kind of what your ergonomic process is going to be what your workflow is going to be yeah where do i do because you know the thing i always did was like i come down here to a hobby and i end up sitting in front of my computer instead of going and hobbying and then when I felt like I want to change the thing I'm watching, I have to move over to where that was. And so now it's all kind of co-located. Uh, so hopefully that will enable me to do more hobbying and less sitting in front of the computer. Um, the opportunity exists that the opposite will happen, I suppose. But <laughs> uh, we shall see. So, but um, yeah, I all got right. like my monitors on big old monitor arms now uh, so that everything is a little more easily maneuverable. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, and I got the, the desk set at a bit higher of a height so that I can like, you know, lower my, lower my little chair down. Uh, and then so that when you're sitting here painting, you're at a bit more comfortable angle. So it doesn't yep. mess with your back as much as when you're, you know, six, four and 300 pounds like yeah. me, then, you know, uh, and, and for, when you get to be 43 years old, uh, you know, it's better, it's better than paying to see a chiropractor once a week. So, Yep. No, I get it. I'm I'm feeling it right now. I'm changing up where I'm working on things between like my personal things and like games workshop and like I build in little breaks just because of the angle. But mm -hmm. uh, like for me, hobby wise, I did pick up the upgrade box at Adepticon. Oh, nice. Okay. So I got that. Uh, I got an asthma die just because he's cool. Well, actually, I picked him up because when I went over to the Games Workshop booth to buy the Games Workshop stuff, I couldn't find it. And I turn around, and Mike Brandt's standing there. And he sees me, and he can tell I'm clearly looking for things. Well, And I, I also know Mike. And so I'm like, Mike, uh, where's the new Dark Angel stuff? And he said, like, hold on, I'll go get you for you. And so he goes and gets this out of the back for me, the Inner Circle Companions. Inner Circles, yeah. Which was like the one thing I actually wasn't going to buy. Uh, <laughs> and he goes and gives it to me, and I'm thinking, well, when the head of Games Workshop Global Events hands you something, uh, you kind of got to buy it at that point. So yeah. then I went, well, the yeah. thing I wanted to play them with was Asmodai, so I'm going to go get Asmodai, and then I'm like, well, I was going to get the upgrade sprue regardless. So that was my haul there. Uh, I went to oh, I mentioned I played a lot of Old World uh, over that week, so I went to Elric's Hobbies, and they have these cool like movement tray converters so you can put your 20 nice. mil bases in here and it spaces them out and i got them in the cool. smaller bit too for like my missile troops 
And then Gale Force, they had some converter bases and bases, but Gale Force 9, for like 10 bucks, were selling these like packets of MDF ones. And like you're getting like for 10 bucks, I got like 80, 25 millimeter bases, which I think Man. you get like 50 for, or it's, I can't remember what the Games Workshop told us, but basically it undercut GW's price by like a bunch. Um, if you bought the MDF, Gale Force Gale Nine, Force. that's a that's an old school like hobby hobby aid company. Like they've yeah. been around for a minute. <laughs> it's yeah. So, uh, and then um, thinking about the hobby challenge for next month, I was thinking about this earlier. So I'm never going to build things just the way they're on the box anymore. I've got too much Nurgle, Death Guard, Chop and Change in me now that I picked okay. up all my Orc buddies that do that. So I've got Asmodai here, right? And he's got, like, his two hands. And in the, uh, you know, he's got the hand with the sword down, but stretched out. And then he's kind of got the other hand, his right hand with his mace, or his Proceus, but it's kind of, like, tucked up. And I saw this in the back of the upgrades, bro. He's got his, his Bible, right? His book, right? And so mm -hmm. I have the idea of, like, he's holding the sword in one hand, and he's kind of got the book reading it in the other. Like, I gotta oh, find a hand cool. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Or the other one is he's got the Croesus and he's like holding the book out at you with the sword hand to be like, see this right here, this part right here, this is where you right messed here? up. This says you're this says you're screwed. So yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> so which one of those should I I mean, obviously I'm going hood and smoke. We're not, we already had that debate. I'm doing hood and smoke. But which hand do I put the Bible the the book in? Is he is he just kind of contemplating? the musings of the lion or is he holding out his book of repentance going you messed up this is where it says i get to beat you up is he tr looking to find who he's gonna who he's going to repent or has he decided who he's going to go repent i don't know man that's up to you pose them both and see what you come up with so okay yep so i just got to go dig through my giant box of hands like or of bits and find the right hand like the hand like either like gripping down or like kind of up like cupping. So I guess it'll come down to, can I find the right bit? But those are, uh, those were the two ideas I had just kind of looking okay. at the bits and the stuff I got from Adepticon is like a challenge for next month of like, how cool can I make my asthma die, but you know, make him a little bit different. Also, it looks like there's some room on that backpack for some backpack stuff as well. Some so backpack swag, that. get that, get that backpack game strong. So, yep. um, all right, so I for uh, I'm gonna have to figure out, and and I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do, but um, I am I have decided and purchased, you know, got leave and purchased tickets to go to the uh, GW Dallas Open event. Nice, That's the weekend before Memorial Day. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pop over there and play in that. So I need to figure out a list uh, and whatever hobbying needs to get done to finish that list, which probably won't be much, but because I've got but. Um, man, I don't, I don't want to play Iron Storm. I just don't. I don't because I don't. I want to play Dark Angels, um, right. even if it's not, you know, a Dark Angels detachment. It will be something with more Dark Angels than just Azrael. So that's what I'm working on. I'm currently looking at Firestorm lists because I want something that has the damage output to give Iron Storm pause, but. Uh, I don't know. We're, 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 we're testing. We're working on it. So. That's what I'm going to end up having to do is uh, whatever hobby you needs to support that. So um, it looks like you got you got three squads of inceptors. That seems to be pretty pretty big. I've also looked at um, suppressors just because when you put them drop them within twelve inches or something, then suddenly they're strength ten. So they also sort of hit that oh, wow. role hmm. of of like they're a little bit cheaper than inceptors. They have more shots. They hit on fours though. But you can, you know, you can oath something. But it's just something I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna have to experiment with them because, again, like you, like you notice, like things that don't really hurt like vehicles or interact with medium vehicles suddenly in Firestorm can interact because now they're an extra strength. Same oh, thing yeah. with hell blasters. Oh yeah. Uh, so a lot of those uh, space marine vehicles have like one plus one strength that hits you at a, at a very important break point. So yeah, yeah. So that's something in there, um, and then. What else was in Especially that with access to a plus one to wound stratagem. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, yeah. and let's scouts. See. You got all so, the scouts yeah. you need. I don't. I I have a bunch of old metal scouts. I'm probably gonna have to get some of the new plastic scouts. Um, I don't know. I, I'll I'll think about it. I'll figure something gotcha. out. 
So, and I was, cause they uh, still haven't given you access to company heroes again. So I might need to get, um, I don't know, like what to do with as with Asriel. I'm not sure. So I don't know. I'll, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, bounce yeah. some stuff off you as, and uh, maybe if we run a, if we do, I, I would like to try and get another episode or two out in the next couple of weeks to catch up on some of the stuff that from a, you know, since Adepticon and maybe we can do some sounding between now and then, but um, gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, all, right. all right. Community interaction. Let's hit it. So, so Alan, Percival, so the Wraith Raider, he's got at us. So he, speaking of Firestorm, he says, I ran st- uh, Firestorm like Bailey did, but with Azrael and Apothecary with the enhancement, sustained hits, invuln, and ignore all modifiers. All right, because you have the Champion of Humanity enhancement. Yeah, it's uh, with so bonus. good. <laughs> it's, yep. Yeah. Uh, that would be interesting to put that on the nine-man blob of <laughs> bikes, too, because now all those, uh, you can't, like, super nerf your, your nine-man <laughs> bike squad. So, uh, so I I hear you on that, but the fact that they're rapid fire means that you have to get them within nine inches to get that third shot. Um, so, that's fair. And, and 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 the bikes are just kind of unwieldy manu- to maneuver, which is why the and like so I ran this this unit a couple days ago um, with Azrael and a lieutenant, a lieutenant with the champion humanity. And uh, they just shot a, a Tau goes kill to ribbons with one go and then got aced immediately in return. So like I said, we need to, yeah. we need to figure out a way to, to keep them a little safer. Um, don't really know exactly what that is yet. If it's keep them in a land raider until or something until I can unmask them, uh, you know, mid game. Um, but the problem is like if you put Azrael in that in that unit, then you're losing CP. Uh, so yep. maybe, um, I'm not sure. Still working on it. Yep. No worries. We'll figure it out. Just like we t- were trying to figure out before we have the mm-hmm. chance to try and figure it out again. So, um, so, uh, Alan finishes his thought saying that was good, but they always get focused early game. Yes, they do. Now he says 10 and furnace Hence, Marines and a storm yeah. Raven with a captain with a free dev wound strat is also fun to use. So I thought about this as well, uh, and I'm kind of of the Gravis Captain with six uh, Flamestorm Aggressors, because that way you get the reroll wounds, because okay. the Flamestorms are twin-linked, and that's yep. spicy. So, uh, and they're, and like, you could also potentially use that stratagem on Centurions, but you can't put a Captain with them, so, uh Yeah. <laughs> All right, and they're so, going to be a lot harder to to maneuver, but yeah, yeah. I got called out by name, Bailey. Aircraft don't get minus one to hit anymore. That's ninth edition. Smiley face. The I only th- benefit of aircraft is infinite movement and can't be charged by non flyers. Uh, he says it later too. It's why the Nephilim has it on the data sheet. I mean, you are correct. I'm a mess. Yeah, I'm a, we... I'm an absolute flaming pile of mess. I get it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think that was an assumption I kind of had as well. Um, but after looking at it, it's like, oh, yep, you're right. Um, and he says later, uh, he said the apothecary can't bring the character. I agree. Um, I, 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 I do. I did say that in that episode. I think because the bodyguard rule, the character has to be the last one that dies. So, uh, yeah. so even then, that wouldn't work. And when you have multiple things attached to a unit, uh, apoth or things cannot res character models. So, I am aware of that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, saying our next comment was from someone we've we have seen this person comment several times uh uh, ad option video 209 uh the books mediocre mediocre detachments are fine who cares no one wants broken ones um yeah like i see any thoughts about the the nerf to deathwing knights and the lion were pretty bad we completely agree i i understand yeah it's um yeah we we took a we took a whooping we took a drubbing and we're just gonna have to figure out a way to to deal with that until they decide to balance data slate it if they do so, yeah. um, I mean, you can be you can be mad about it, which uh, or we can try and find out what works. Uh, yeah, I mean, both of those are also options. You can be mad and also try and figure out what's worth <laughs> what works. So, uh, yeah, all yeah, I mean, the the land speeder vengeance, man, like I, God, land speeder vengeance getting nerfed was the next thing that that uh, that Alan comments on uh, yeah. was a I thought the a, a three damage land speeder in Company of Hunters was going to be baller. That was going to be super good, but it got nerfed down yep. to a two damage land speeder. 
Unfortunately. So that's why um, I left the one that there was one on the shelf at Adepticon and I left it there for that reason. I was like, Oh, I don't yeah. actually, I have the dark yeah. shroud, but I don't have the, the plasma. I've got like, like four of those fine. halls <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah, they all went sad face back up. So 11th edition. Uh, here we come. 11th edition. Here we come. Yeah. And that's again, and that's what I would say to anybody that's like super sad about stuff that's happened is give them another edition. They'll bring there's it all a, back. There's still a, there's still a lot of tenth edition left to play, yep. right? We have two more years of tenth edition, right? And they've shown that they're willing to make dramatic changes to things with data slates, right? So um, that is kind of where we're at. So and so, yeah. and we might get a second codex. Like how many? Like look at the last couple editions. There's been a second Space Marine codex towards the end of the codex. So I don't think that would fix the Dark Angels specific problem. So I mean, the Space Marine codex is fine. It's even good, right? That's not where the issue lies. The issue lies with the Dark Angels. The, uh, so, yeah. And until there's a Terminator Command Squad in the Space Marine Codex that gains the Deathwing keyword, then well, if they did put one did. in there, then they would gain the Deathwing <laughs> keyword. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, there we go. All right. So that all being said, thank you all for listening to this month's episode of the Path to Redemption, the Warhammer Forty Thousand Dark Angels podcast. Our next episode will come out hopefully later this month. Like we said, we're going to try and do a double shot, maybe get some guests on, see where we can go with that. So please like, mm-hmm. comment, and share because uh, we don't want you to miss out on having your comments read out or you missing out on whoever we have on as a guest and you find out months later when everything they have to say has been validated, balanced data slated out of the game and is no longer relevant. Uh, we don't want that. So if you're watching us on YouTube, comment below, like, share, and subscribe, if, or if you're listening to us on your preferred podcasting service, do it there too, please. And last but not least, we'd like to thank Purple Planet for the use of their music. And until next time, I'm Bailey from Dankless Wargaming. And this is Heath with Team Tab War Hawaii. Stay loyal, angels. <laughs>